Hi everyone, this is Tamara Mahoney. I work at the NXS Foundation and this is the Open Energy Access web series. So today I'm gonna to be talking with Ricky Butch from Positive Capital Partners about the DREC initiative. And um, it's not the first time that Ricky and I have spoken. There's actually a previous episode, um, I think it was about six months ago, mm -hmm. where, we, um, where we also spoke about um, what was happening with DREX. But things have moved a lot since that time. And we're at a pretty exciting moment to, to catch up again. So i um, really happy for, uh, for this conversation to take place today. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so quick introductions. Again, my name is Tamara. I work at NXS and NXS uh, is a foundation that funds open innovation in energy access. Um, we were one of the first, if not the first organization to come along and support the DREC initiative, this amazing idea that originally came from Positive Capital Partners and South Pole. I'll have Ricky introduce that in, in just a minute. And um, since, ooh, I think it's been a couple years now, actually, since it first uh, uh, came through as an idea. And um, like I said, we're at a pretty exciting moment. So um, Ricky, why don't you introduce yourself and let everyone know kind of, you know, the quick story of the partnership between Positive Capital Partners and South Pole, and just tell us um, the basics of what the DREC initiative is all about. Absolutely. Um, and again, thanks for the opportunity to, to be here. Um, so my name is Ricky. I'm a, a co-founder of Positive Capital Partners. Um, there are two other co-founders as well for the company, uh, Paul Needham and Nick Fedorkew. Um, and um, we have been working with uh, South Pole Group in co-leading this DREC initiative now for about two years. We started in just, actually just around the time when COVID uh, lockdown started was when we launched oh, the DREC right. initiative. That's right. Um, we started Positive Capital. The three of us came together really to start Positive Capital because we, we thought we saw a gap in the market, which was, you know, all of us had experience trying to build renewable energy projects um, in emerging markets. Um, and we saw there was uh, access to capital was remains one of the perennial challenges that developers face. Um, at the same time, we saw this tremendous growth from corporate-led renewable procurement. I believe it's it's you know half of all wind in the U.S. has been installed because a company decided to purchase electricity from that wind farm. Uh, and that's we wanted to essentially harness that same momentum, but really direct some of that towards the emerging markets, and in particular, the off-grid sector. Um, and that's when we partnered with South Pole to launch the DREC initiative, which was to develop the market mechanisms, commercial contracts, the constructs uh, necessary to enable corporations that have climate targets like net zero targets or 100% renewable energy targets to be able to support new renewable installations in emerging markets, um, particularly those in the off-grid sector. Okay, and the DREC, of course, stands for Distributed Renewable Energy Certificate. Um, can you briefly explain what is the what is the um, the newness? What is the innovation there? Yeah. What is a distributed renewable energy certificate as compared to what our audience might know as a renewable energy certificate? So, so maybe it actually is helpful to start from the very beginning. Um, which Let's is what, what is a renewable energy certificate? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. um, so it really started with compliance markets. So governments were increasingly taking a stand on decarbonizing the energy sector and were asking utilities to procure renewable energy. The challenge, of course, is that it's very hard to know where an electron comes from, right? Because you have multiple plants feeding into a, a transmission grid and there's unfortunately no way to tag an electron. And so what the, the regulatory regime essentially developed was this idea of an intangible certificate that would represent the value of electricity produced from a, a renewable asset. So if you have a solar plant, you actually produce two commodities. You produce electricity that goes into the grid, or in, in the case the off-grid sector goes to, to load, um, and a renewable energy certificate. Um, and those are sold separately. So utilities that would have a mandate to procure 25, 30% of their electricity from renewable energy would need to have the corresponding number of certificates. Um, and they could really get that two ways. One was through power purchase agreements, um, where they would contract directly with a, a solar or wind developer, or they would just buy the certificates. And in a lot of cases, that's the only option you really have. And so what ended up happening was uh, a lot of utility scale developers relied on this offtake agreement for the certificate to help finance projects. 
Um, and that morphed into the voluntary space. So as companies started taking stands uh, around climate change and their emissions and wanting to address their emissions uh, or power their operations with renewable energy, they took the same approach that the utilities had taken, which is we now need to own these renewable energy certificates. Um, and in again, in developed markets where it's possible to have bilateral, bilateral arrangements with, with utility developers, um, these companies went and, and, and engaged in those PPA contracts. And so you see in the news headlines like Google or Microsoft signing these massive PPAs with, with WIM developers um, to procure both use electricity for, to power their data centers. But what's often not mentioned is that they're not just procuring the electricity, they're also procuring the certificates because they need the certificates in order to make a credible claim around uh, powering their operations with renewable energy. Um, but in most of the markets in the world, companies can't do that. They can't bilaterally engage with the developer, so they have to buy certificates. Um, and that's, again, circling back to why we started the DREC initiative, and we think this is an important way to catalyze new capacity. A lot of developers in emerging markets can't rely on a REC offtake agreement, unlike developers in, say, Europe or in the US. And so that's what we wanted to enable. Uh, but a lot of the frameworks, particularly for uh, existing environmental markets, don't really extend to the off-grid space. And so that's why we decided to create a distributed renewable energy certificate that was specifically targeted at developers who were building small-scale projects, uh, not 200, 300 megawatt utility-scale systems, but 100 kilowatt systems that were powering schools or hospitals um, that traditionally have not been able to monetize those credits, unlike their utility-scale counterparts. Um, and that's that's what the DREC is meant to solve. It's a, it's a distributed certificate that's created from a kilowatt hour of electricity produced by a renewable asset um, that's often behind the meter or in an off-grid setting. Um, and we have developed a software platform to help automate the verification of those certificates and to enable them to be traded and bought by companies um, who can then use those, those certificates against their greenhouse gas targets. Thank you so much for, um, that's a really clear explanation about, and it leads me perfectly into um, introducing this topic for our audience specifically. So um, I, there's so many ways to talk about DREX. I mean, there's, you have all these different streams of, of work going on, but what we're gonna talk about today, and specifically for the audience that is interested in the kind of work that NXS does, is we're really talking to energy access developers today. So um, I'm gonna ask the kinds of questions that I know are on their minds about what they need to know. So these are the people who are, yeah, making the distributed re renewable energy and might not know yet about how they can actually become involved. Um, one of the targets that NXS has as a foundation is to maximize the adoption of open source and energy access. And of course, the adoption of projects that we participate in. And so, you know, when I say maximize the adoption, I'm really saying I wanna to talk to every single person that might need um, one of the innovations that we've worked with or just one of the innovations that exist in, in general and say, you should use this, you know, go ahead and start using it. Um, where are you running into problems? Um, we want to save you time and money. We want to give you something that will allow you to do the work faster or will allow you to increase revenue so that you can scale more quickly. And um, there's a lot of things that excite me personally about the um, the the DREC initiative, but um, among I think the the two the two things that I want to highlight to get started off with that I can see being very um, interesting for developers is that DREC's can create this new revenue stream for energy access in a sustainable way. So it's going to create a new market to sell the um, environmental attributes that are created by distributed renewable energy. Um, you just were speaking about that, but could you go into a bit more detail about um, how exactly that looks for the developer? Yeah, so we intend to mirror a lot of the way uh, buyers, particularly corporate buyers are used to purchasing renewable energy certificates in, in more developed markets. And the way they tend to do this is they, they essentially enter into a multi-year agreement um, where they pay upon delivery per megawatt hour of, of certificate delivered. Um, so what ends up usually happening is, is that if you say have a, a utility scale 
solar farm um, and you have entered into a multi-year agreement with a corporate buyer to sell your RECs uh, to them, um, usually at the end of the year or sometimes you know, every, every six months, um, you produce a report that says you generated so much electricity, it goes to uh, a verifier who oftentimes will work with a, a grid operator. Um, in the US, it's usually a, a, an ISO or an RTO. Um, who will then use the, the, the uh, data that the developer provided and validate it with um, actual dispatch logs from the grid operator. And so yes, indeed, the solar plant did produce so many megawatt hours. Um, and they often build, had, generate a report that they give to the company saying you have this many certificates and the company then pays the developer, um, usually through an intermediary, um, for those certificates. Um, and that's generally the process we intend to roll out for off-grid developers. Um, so uh, a company would engage a market intermediary like Positive Capital or South Pole um, to say that we would like to purchase certificates um, from a particular country. We will then turn around and engage with uh, a variety of developers to source those certificates, um, often entering into multi-year agreements to say that you know per kilowatt hour um, you generate, we will pay you this much money. Um, after we validate that you indeed did gener generate this, this uh, amount of electricity, um, we would then uh, create a digital certificate, um, which we are currently using distributed ledger technology to track. Okay. Um, we will then sell that uh, to the corporate. The corporate pays us, uh, and then we then pay the developer. Um, so we essentially have these back-to-back -back contracts, and we will facilitate that. So it's not uh, the developer having to necessarily engage bilaterally with a corporate off-taker, um, because that's a lot of time and resources and it may not come to fruition. So, so market intermediaries like like ourselves or South Pole will essentially facilitate that 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 transaction. You know, one of the things that um, sticks out to me is that this could potentially fill the gap that maybe is being neglected right now by donors and energy access. So, it's um, one hundred percent common to say, yeah, the the thing that we need more of is more help with operations, day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, maintenance, everything that falls under that category. Um, could, is that how you see it too? When, when like the idea came and you started working on it, was it to fill that gap or yeah, could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a few models and value points that we see the DREC offering to a project developer. Certainly on, on one level, absolutely, we do think that a DREC offtake agreement can help support the ongoing operating cost for a project. Maybe the best example of that is a, is a project we're working on right now with UNDP in Uganda, um, where they are looking to electrify health facilities, mm -hmm. um, the first phase being 11 sites. So UNDP has put up the capital um, to build these sites. These are solar storage systems that will power uh, mainly maternal wards. Um, but often, you know, there's concern that will there be ongoing uh, resources to ensure the systems remain up and available? Um, and so that's where we engaged on the DREC side saying, well, what if we were able to monetize, um, you know, every kilowatt hour that those systems generated, we'd sell those certificates to a corporate and that money would be used to actually support the OPEX contract on a, on a forward basis. And so that's how we've structured that particular project. And that's resonated with a lot of um, donors and other GFIs because as you, as you said, um, Tamara, there's, there's, you know, they put the money up front, but there's no guarantee that the systems will be operating in five years. Right. But right. we would provide that incentive through a DREC contract to ensure that the systems remain up. Um, we also do think that there's value in, in um, having these offtake agreements to help bring new capacity online. Right. So much like how utility scale developers have used a multi-year rec agreement as a firm offtake to help get financing, we think that's also a role that the DREC offtake agreement can pay. Uh, and even in some instances, we may, we may think that there's value in providing a bit of the money up front. So okay. say you have a, a, an eight-year offtake agreement, perhaps uh, an intermediary like, like ourselves or South Pole might say, well, we'll pay two years up front, um, and that will offset the owner's equity requirement, help crowd in senior debt. Um, it's something we're testing right now with some of our partners, including the IFC and, and CDC group, um, which is to really test that hypothesis that, you know, does that really uh, help make projects viable, um, you know, where before a developer would, be, have, would have difficulty sourcing 30% owner's equity, but if we're able to pay for a year or two up front, um, that reduces that burden and brings in additional debt financing. So that's something that we're testing right now. But we think there's many models in which the DREC can, can help bring new capacity online. That's really big news. This is really exciting stuff. Um, are you are you hoping for or 
maybe you, you've already planned for this, um, that the buyers of DREX could assign like a higher value to the DREX because the impact is that much higher. For example, um, if I if I understand correctly, the, the IREC right now doesn't do that. It doesn't assign a higher value depending on where it's coming from, but the PREC does. It's, um, it's a different kind of IREC. And again, please correct me if I'm a little bit off on that. Um, but will the DREC also be able to do this? And is that something you're planning for? Kind of saying like, look, because it's coming from this particular area, it, it has a higher value? That's certainly the way we've been positioning the the DREC. Okay. In our conversation with buyers, we've been saying that that this this is helping to support projects that have very high social co benefits. Okay. So it's not just providing clean electricity; it's also providing reliable power to a hospital or to a school. Okay. Um, and as we know, oftentimes those projects are are much more financially marginal. Mm -hmm. um, and so having an off take agreement for DREC can be that much more impactful. Um, but the buyer should realize that that they're not just paying for electricity; they're also paying to support these additional co-benefits. Okay. Um, so that's really how we position the the DREC as an instrument. But I will say it's not it's well, we've designed it not to be just specific to the off-grid sector. It's one that okay. we think is broadly applicable to distributed energy overall. So we intend to to use this as an instrument to help support CNI projects okay. in addition to some of the more higher impact off-grid installations. Okay. So. Um... Let's say I, I own a mini grid company or a solar home system company. I'm, I'm hearing what you're telling me and I'm like, wow, this sounds really exciting. You know, I, I want to be involved in this and I've got a big staff of people. I've got super smart developers who have the skills um, to to do just about anything. Right. And so I say to them, all right, um, go ahead, like connect to the DREC. I, I, I want to be in on this. Um, can they do that today? And how do they get started? What is step one? Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. So I would say that in general, we are early days yeah. in establishing the market. And so so we at Positive Capital are, are working very closely with South Pole to, to uh, be the, 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 the leaders in terms of really trying to uh, facilitate this market um, foundation from, from starting to, to grow. Um, so if you're a developer, I would say the first step is really to get in touch with us um, and tell us about your project pipeline. Um, what are you operating right now? What do you intend to build over the next 12 or 24 months? Um, because on the flip side, what we're also doing is having conversations with, with early uh, corporate buyers. Uh, these tend to be the climate leaders that have really pushed the envelope in terms of addressing their footprint, address not just their direct footprint, but in many cases, the footprint of the suppliers, many of whom happen to be in places like Southeast Asia or, or Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and so we're looking to pilot uh, direct transactions with some of these these, these corporate buyers, um, and we're in the process of assembling a pipeline of opportunities that we can present to them. Okay. Um, so we're in the early days of, of a market. So uh, you know what we'd like to envision is we have multiple intermediaries um, competing for business, talking to developers, uh, you know, finding ways to engage and and uh, solicit pipeline that they can then sell to to off takers. But we're not there yet. We're we're early in the market. Okay. Um, so that's where that we at PCP and, and Southwell are, are, are looking to collaborate and, and really build this bridge between the buyers and, and project developers. So first step is tell us about your pipeline. Um, we will then, you know, engage with, with the, the leads that we have on the buy side um, to see if they would be interested in buying the DREX from those projects. This is where the narrative really has, has a, a focal point, okay. um, ensuring that, that we're focused on high impact projects, that the buyer sees the value that the projects will provide on the ground, in addition to you know, getting the recs that they can use against their, their greenhouse gas targets. Okay. Um, and if we find an agreement and the, the, the corporate buyer says, yes, I will buy you know, these DRECs from these projects at, at $30 a megawatt hour for seven or eight years, um, you know, we will then turn around and contract with that, that said developer um, and the next step after that is to really connect those projects into the digital platform that we have built um, to help traceability and, and certification. So we've built an open source platform in partnership with the Energy Web Foundation. Um, and what this essentially does is it, it takes in data in real time from projects, um, validates that data and creates a digital certificate that represents you know, a kilowatt hour, or megawatt hour of clean energy. And that's what we will then sell to the corporate. And what the corporate then retires, um, all that's tracked on the on a public ledger. So from an audit standpoint, the corporate can simply point to that record and say, "Look, this is how much energy we actually bought." 
from these different sources. Um, but effectively, that's that's how we, we 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 enable that traceability. And so when the corporate buys that certificate, they pay us, we, and we then pay the project developer. So you're going to um, once the the company kind of connects to you, they they send you an email. You've looked at all the pipelines. You sign a contract with them, like come some kind of exclusivity contract, or we can talk about that in a second, but just to get the, the steps right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then once everything is working, they're basically sending you their live data. They're sending you how many kilowatt hours of distributed renewable energy they are creating. Okay. That's right. Yeah, the, the open source platform has a, a public API um, that essentially allows a developer to register their projects on the platform and then uh, to send in data in real time um, at, at any frequency, really. The platform actually issues certificates on a daily basis, um, but, you know, we know that connectivity can be unreliable, it can sometimes be costly, and so it really, you know, um, it, it's more driven by what the buyer would like to see than, than anything else, but, um, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely that flexibility of, of sending in data as frequently uh, as, as necessary or as needed. Um, or as wanted, okay. um, and then the platform will, will create the certificates based on that. Okay. Um, you know, if, if, if you'd like to share um, anyone who has already maybe reached out to you or any companies that you'd like to work with, um, this is, of course, we're not setting this in stone, we're not committing to this, but is there anyone out there that you'd like to kind of mention as like, yeah, this, this would be an interesting company to work with, or we've already started exploring options with this company, just to kind of um, tell the developers out there, give them some examples. You know, if they're wondering, is this yeah. something for me? Am I the right sort of operation set up? Um, why don't you clarify that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. We're, I would say we're very open to developers who are looking at all sorts of uh, applications, configurations. You know, we've had discussions with with companies like Okra that have and VBoss that have proprietary um, hardware and software that they built. Um, we have conversations with with companies like Anji that are looking at both the solar home system market and the, the mini grid market. Um, we've also had uh, conversations with CNI developers that work in places like India, for example, Candy Solar. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, many of them have looked at the platform and are, are, are actively trying to either in the process of doing so or have done so, figure out how they can actually use our public APIs and send in data um, and get the generation data validated from those assets to create certificates. Okay. Um, so they're waiting for you, basically. They're kind of getting or, you know, potentially getting set up and they're waiting to have those corporate buyers come on board. Um, to start spending, or, or where are we? We're in um, late April, 2020, so um, anything could change. But um, they're basically, their idea of getting involved now, what's, what's the advantage of getting involved now if they're not able to yet see the money come in <laughs> to be uh, pretty? Yeah, well, the, 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 the platform that we've built is really a proof of concept platform. So I think for us, um, you know, speaking sort of selfishly as the DREC initiative, what we're really keen to, to get is feedback from developers. And so, uh, you know, one of the benefits of being an early adopter for the platform is to help us shape what this platform looks like um, so that it can suit, you know, your needs. Um, so if you have a particular technical configuration or you use a particular OEM or uh, you have this certain topology, we can ensure that the platform is designed to incorporate that. So that's really the value in, in working with us at this stage. Um, and then certainly, you know, we are in the process of, of engaging these corporate buyers and part of the way we're doing that is by highlighting projects. Um, so, you know, engaging with us now, particularly if you're able to work on the technical integration side, um, would be, would it help us highlight and promote the projects that, that you know, these developers are doing? Um, and frankly, we just have a higher likelihood of, of getting the corporate interested in purchasing DREX from those projects. Okay, well, that's a, I mean, if you ask someone who works at a foundation that supports open source innovation, um, that sounds like, yeah, music to my ears. I mean, we at NXS, we also want to encourage people to get involved in this because we want to see that feedback. We want to see the community. You know, we, we know that with the, um, with the feedback, with the um, saying, hey, you know, we do it like this. It doesn't look like you've considered that aspect. We know how much um, that kind of thing helps out. So I also encourage people, um, you know, for so many reasons to become an early adopter of um, the DREC platform. Um, and especially because it 
gets you to be part of this open source community. And actually, why don't we talk about, um, just lay it out really clearly what we mean by open source, because um, you're talking about you know this platform, it's an open source platform. So my mm -hmm. understanding is that uh, I could then, if I have the correct skill set, I could basically just um, copy everything, right? I could tweak it if I feel like tweaking it. I could give it a new name and I could start generating DREX. I could, you know, um, hook up with different DRE developers. I could find corporate buyers and I could just go off and do this. Of course, um, it would maybe take years of work <laughs> to get there. But is, is it that open source? Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah, what we've what we've done is the direct platform that we've designed in partnership with EWF um, is 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 public um, uh, public knowledge, public code, um, so anyone can go in and see how the system actually operates. Um, there's there's two components I would say. There's there's a, an off chain piece which is a registry, uh, more like a database, and there is an on chain piece. Um, so the off chain piece is what keeps the metadata for the projects and the organizations and the, the users. And then the on chain piece is really where the certificate lifecycle is tracked. Okay. So when a certificate is created, when it's traded, and 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 particularly important for the buyer when it's retired, um, so they can have that audit trail from where it was generated to when they retired it. Um, and so the off chain piece is is like I mentioned, just a, a database, and anyone could really replicate that. Um, what we're really focused on is the public ledger element. We want a single source of truth for uh, how those environmental attributes were monetized. Um, because there is a risk uh, that buyers will sometimes mention of, of double counting. Um, ensuring that a developer um, did not monetize the same unit electricity two ways, say with a REC and a carbon offset, or maybe you know two different REC schemes for that, that same time period. And having a public ledger um, built on the energy web chain allows us to do that because it is publicly accessible, public queryable. Um, it is that even if you were to replicate the um, the registry piece of it and copy it and, and run your own registry, it's still connecting to the smart contracts that connect to the public ledger uh, for that single source of truth. Um, and so that that was a key for us, which is to we wanted to ensure there was transparency and trust in the process. Um, and the way we felt we did that would do that would be through through an open source approach. The, the other thing I'll mention is that there is a validation phase to this. When data comes into the platform, we don't take it just as is. We, we do run some some checks on it. And we wanted to be very transparent with the community on how those those checks were done. Um, and so it's clear that, you know, when a, a if data sent in and it fails the validation, it's clear why it failed, because it ran through this set of equations. The other benefit for us as, as the DREC initiative is that we get to crowdsource in intelligence on how to make the, the verification more robust. Um, so if the community essentially agrees that this is the right approach for how to validate data so we ensure a level playing field, a fair playing field for everyone, um, then we know that that will again further engender trust with the corporate buyers because they see again fully how this is all uh, done end to end. Um, so then you would ask for a company to sign some kind of exclusivity deal to only um or or well let me ask the question instead of <laughs> leading you into the answer would you ask then a company to sign some co some kind of contract some kind of exclusivity deal and is this something that you think that um we need to explain for the donors for the funders you know wh what should they kind of what should they know about this if they if they're like oh yeah you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm you know talking to this company who's selling solar home systems and they're telling me that they're they've just signed a contract you know with the DREC initiative what does this mean for them yeah so so from a developer's mm -hmm. perspective when you sign a contract with say positive capital or Southpool, you are saying that you are selling the attributes from a particular project or set of projects okay. to us which means that you cannot turn around and sell those same attributes to someone else uh, because of yeah. double counting risk. So, so what we essentially say is you are exclusive when we do enter in a contract with you for the environmental attributes. Um, from a donor's perspective, this is really about de-risking projects because what we are essentially offering is a guaranteed offtake, not on the financial performance of the project or payment from an end user. It's about how much electricity you generate. 
Um, and we offer that that payment in hard currency like US dollars. Okay. So, so a lot of the developers we've talked to see this as, again, a way to, to source an additional financing, um, to provide a foreign exchange uh, hedge, um, and, and kind of myriad other ways that, that, a, that a hard currency offtake can provide. The other thing we'll note is that this is not mutually exclusive to, say, an RBF program, that these can reside, coexist together, that a donor can, can help put an RBF program uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, we can come in as an as an off taker for the DREX. Um, okay. And from the developer's perspective, you essentially have two guarantees now that you can work with: one around performance and you know how much electricity you generate, and one based on maybe additional criteria like you know, um, uh, you know, having the project commissioned. Um, so, so we think there's there's definitely value in in, in combining those together to to further catalyze um, development. All right. Well, then let me let me come to the last question, because, um, you know, maybe I'm sitting someone who's watching this right now and they're they're a developer and they're like, all right, you know, I'm I'm pretty excited about this. You know, I, I'm going to look into it. And, you know, we're all busy people. We we don't have tons and tons of time to invest in um, every new thing that comes our way. And, you know, I've been uh, oddly in, in energy access now for about 10 years. It's not something that I knew I was uh, going to stick around in for so long. I, I, and I hope I'm here for, for a lot longer. But in the time that I've been in energy access, I've seen so many ideas and so many, um, you know, companies and projects that sounded really, really promising and they fail. And, you know, speaking from the NXS perspective, failure is not the worst thing in the world. That's one of the reasons why we open source everything, because if something does fail, well, we hope that, you know, we can put the lessons out there for others to learn. But besides that, um, what reassurance would I have as a developer that this is something that I should put my time into? Um, why is the DREC the most promising way to modernize my environmental attributes in the DRE space? Why DREC and not Solstrom or the PREC or anything else that is not the same, but there are other options mm -hmm. that are in the same space. So why do Rick? Yeah. Yes. So, so maybe I'll actually, I'll answer that by stepping back just a bit and talking first about, um, I think the general options that developers sometimes weigh, which is, do I monetize my project through the carbon markets or do I use this, this rec instrument as a way of doing it? And, and what we've noticed is that, that carbon markets and monetize. Oh, I think I lost Sorry, that was, a, that was a neat problem. Um, I asked you a question and you said, let me start by taking a step back. And then you uh, went out for about 10 seconds. So could I just ask you to start that over again so I don't lose anything? Okay, okay. yes. Go ahead. <laughs> so we're yes, taking a yes. step back. Uh, so, so yeah, let me answer that question by, by, by taking a step back. I think a lot of developers sometime, uh, today are, are weighing their options in terms of monetizing environmental attributes. And it primarily comes down to, do I monetize my projects through the carbon markets or do I do this, this REC instrument? Um, and, and we'll get into different flavors of the RECs. Um, but that's sort of fundamentally that, that binary choice. The tricky part with carbon markets is that there's a lot of upfront investment that's required. Um, because you have to prove a baseline that's not going to happen. So my project is moving forward and it's going to reduce carbon by this much. Um, well, someone has to come and validate that. Oh, you know, is the community using kerosene right now? Are there diesel generators on site? Uh, how much carbon would those be emitting? What would this project then do in terms of reducing that? So there's a lot of upfront investment that has to happen. It's not um, unexpected to see a, a co upfront cost of twenty-five or $30,000 um, for an assessment like that. Um, with a rec, it's it's very binary. It's zero one. It's did the electricity get generated or not, um, and and buyers buy the recs for that clean electricity that's been generated. So you're not trying to prove a, a counterfactual of emissions would have been this, but you know they're at X, but now they're Y. It's really just this much electricity was produced. So the transaction costs on the rec side are significantly lower. So we say that when it comes to um, Lar uh, large renewable projects, and by large, basically anything above a kilowatt or two, um, the, the, it makes sense to go the rec route. Um, for very small projects, 
Um, the mechanisms that are used to convert from electricity to carbon potential are favorable for very small projects. So if you have a 200 watt solar panel, um, going the route of what, what, what Solstrom offers is, is probably more appealing because the carbon equivalent is, is much higher for the, for, that, for the initial allotment of electricity. But as you start getting into a kilowatt, two kilowatts and beyond that, um, the, the value of the REC becomes much higher. Um, so that's generally how we would see th those two options. Um, now within the REC, there is um, there a, a, a variety of, of flavors. Yeah. Um, we think that the DREC is, is as a common denominator that can enable the other, uh, the other REC frameworks. So it's not, a, again, an either or. It's really an and situation. Um, so the PREC, for example, um, you know, they've done a, Energy Peace Partners has done a great job in establishing um, an, an additional label around quality to say that this particular you know, renewable asset is addressing humanitarian need or is in a very fragile uh, conflict-ridden area. Um, and they have tremendous experience in, in working in those regions so they understand kind of the on-the-ground realities. Um, so you could have a DREC that comes from a project in those regions that then Energy Peace Partners goes and validates and says, actually, you know, there's some additional humanitarian co-benefits to this particular um, DREC. And so, so that's, we see that as really a way to enhance the value of, of a DREC because there can be additional labels that are applied um, to those kind of projects. Um, but we also know, and, and you know, ultimately, this all is all going to work only if we have buyers, right? If corporate buyers are willing to buy these DREC um, certificates. And, and they, of course, and you mentioned sort of this, uh, sort of the, the, the problem of, of how do we know this is going to be around? In a few years, and that's the first question we often get from buyers: is is you know if we're going to enter into a, a ten-year agreement, how do we know this is going to be around? That this instrument will be valid. And so what we've decided to do is is not introduce our own standard with the DREC, but to really work closely with existing established environmental standards. Um, so we've been working very closely with the International REC standard, um, with the Gold standard, with Vera, and ensuring that the DREC instrument is fungible in that it can be transposed into an IREC or to, into a gold standard REC. Ah. Um, and so a developer who works with the DREC framework automatically gets that. So in the unlikely event that you know, all the DREC kind of uh, infrastructure goes away, there's still that tie to the existing standards that corporates have supported and acknowledge uh, you know, and have been around for, for, for many years. Um, so that's one way we've ensured that, that we can we can we can uh, uh, provide confidence to the corporate buyers that indeed this this instrument is going to be around because we are very closely aligned with with the standards that they that they know and that they recognize. You know, today. and it's not just assurance for the corporate buyers; it is assurance for the developers too. I mean, it's kind of like it's um, it absolutely. absolutely works both ways. And so I'm really glad that you um, answered the question that way because. It's, yeah, it's a concrete answer. It's not just, um, well, you know, we're planning and, and the idea is, I mean, this is, um, let's say, done enough. This is set up enough that, uh, yeah, it's time to invite developers to, to come on board as early adopters <laughs> where things still might, you know, yeah. and, and get a little bit bumpy, but it's ready. Okay. Right, and and we as a DREC initiative, you know, us mm -hmm. at PCP and, and Southpaw are looking to transition from from a, a multi-stakeholder uh, a task force to a more permanent organization that will oversee the software platform and the alignment with the standards and engaging with corporate buyers and and so you know one of our goals this year is to help either stand up a new organization or to align very closely with an existing organization. Um, and essentially establish a DREC initiative organization or foundation that will will continue the work moving forward. Um, you know, as as we at the Secretariat, you know, as a positive capital and South Pole look to commercialize the DREC instrument with corporate buyers. All right. Well, as always, I feel like we could talk forever. Um, and I hope that, you know, we can catch up again in another six months or so, you know, see how things have changed from there. Talk about the lessons that we've learned along the way. Again, always trying to let um, developers know that you can look to positive capital for the answers. So you can look to N access to um, ask the questions that are still out there. So if if there are questions that you have.
perhaps you have many after you've seen this, let us know. Um, so I'll put the email address that they should contact you at. We'll also have the email address for NXS and we can create an FAQ. We can, in as much as we possibly can, we want to help people um, get involved with the DREC initiative and on the DREC platform. And we wanna start seeing um, that kind of revenue stream flow into the DRE space. And um, yeah, we'll keep you updated with all of that. So all the contact information will be below. Um, if you're watching this again, my ask for you is to contact Ricky. Tell him that, you know, yeah, I'd like to be involved. I want to tell you about my pipeline. And my next ask is that you um, check it out, even if you are not the person that makes those decisions. Educate yourself about it. Learn what the DREC initiative is about so that, um, so that you can tell your friends, <laughs> you know, um, so that we can keep the word so that this can become a, a household name. And um, thanks again for your time, Ricky. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And... Um, yeah, as, Thank you for and the I, again, I look forward to um, to keeping the conversation going so this doesn't have to be the end. And uh, yeah, thanks for your time. I never quite know how to say it to end. Um, <laughs> see you later. No, uh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that's, that's actually the best one way thing, to end. Ricky, um, do you, you have know, anything I, else that you'd like to say? <laughs> you, well, well, I just wanted to say that NAXIS has been a strong partner from the very beginning. Um, and so we're very appreciative for all the work and support um, through the years, and, and we're looking forward to the, oh, the next, thank you. The and next I, steps. Thank you. I did not ask Ricky to say that. <laughs> so thank you for not only saving the outro of this, but also giving us a shout out. Um, it's, been a, it's been a great experience the whole way. So um, until we talk again, uh, again, my name is Tamara. This is Ricky. And thanks for watching Open Energy Access. Go ahead and share this with everyone who needs to be a part of it. Thanks. Goodbye.